All right, boys, so the Betensor co-founder literally tweeted Tao Flow is live. This means that the new emission and tokenomic model is out for subnets and I think is going to drastically change how subnet ceiling prices and floor prices interact within the ecosystem. I'm going to be explaining to you exactly what that update is in simple terms, how it affects you and what you can do about it. And we're also going to go over a second update that they're currently pushing because it's going to affect root stakers across the whole network. So if you're staking some Tau on root, listen up to the end of this video because you're going to have some choices to make. Let's get right to it. So if you haven't watched my last video on emissions, I highly suggest go do so because I explain how subnet emissions work. But in short, every subnet has his own emission pool paired Tau and Alpha. And each subnet gets emissions in three different ways with Tau in, Alpha in. These are the three main components in which a subnet gets more liquid over time, more tradable and more interesting for investors. So under the old emission, every 12 second block, a subnet would get a fixed amount of Tau in into the subnet's liquidity pool based off of the subnet's price divided by the total sum of all subnet prices. So let's take an example with shoots. Let's say their price is 0.1 Tau and the sum of subnet prices is one, hypothetically speaking. So 0.1 divided by one equals 0.1. So shoots would hypothetically get 0.1 Tau in tokens per 12 second block. This was the old model. And as you can see, this is very price based because it's alpha price divided by sum of alpha prices, which determines how much Tau in that you get. The more Tau in that you get in your subnet, the more your subnet is liquid, the more it's interesting for trading and for investors, etc. So you can instantly see that a subnet's emissions are correlated with their alpha price. And if you think about it, three seconds, we're so early into dynamic Tau in this market that there's a lot of scams, there's a lot of pump and dumps, insider information circulating around whales or big institutions even gobbling up some alpha tokens, then announcing it. A lot of shady things happening behind closed doors, which can result in irregular price pumps, maybe two, three, four Xs, even sustained over a long period of time because it only takes a few buyers to actually sustain the token and for that subnet to not do anything significant it could still have a high alpha price just off of speculation and you know i think the team thought it through and they made this implementation for a reason because if you're not producing anything but you're just good with marketing and just saying a bunch of things to retail to get them hyped up you are going to steal a lot of Tau emissions without providing any value because of your high price. And I think the Open Tensor Foundation understood this and they implemented the new change that we're about to see. So under the new model, Tau in, meaning how much Tau you get into your subnet liquidity pool every 12 second block, would be strictly based off of the net inflow of people staking or unstaking to your specific subnet this is insane guys and if you pay attention in my recent what is Bitensor video i told you guys that the stakers were the most important people or participants in a particular subnet and this update proves it all so for example let's take shoots again because it's the most popular subnet within a range of 12 seconds Let's say there's three people staking a thousand Tau into that subnet. The subnet would have a plus 3000 mark for that block. And at the same time, within that same range, if two people unstake a thousand Tau each, that's minus 2000. So 3000 minus 2000, that is a 1000 Tau net inflow for that subnet. So the subnet would get a specific Tau in amount for that block. And you need to understand that obviously if something happens, people are panicking or there's some FUD news on a particular subnet, people are obviously going to unstake. So example, if for a specific block, there's only people selling minus 5,000 Tau outflowed from that subnet, the protocol won't actually remove any Tau from the pool because the minimum amount you could get is zero. So even if a subnet is massively dumping, the stakers are leaving, you just won't get any Tau in emissions for the set period amount of blocks while the inflow is negative. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but just look at the images I'm showing you guys and just rewatch it a couple times. It's all going to click. 
And naturally, if you compare this emission model with the old one, you are going to understand that this one is far superior in my opinion, because it actually estimates how valued and wanted your subnet is by who the stakers or the shareholders who are the most important component to a subnet's success, according to me. So this way of giving out emissions and liquidity to subnet pools actually value what real people appreciate much more what real people dedicate their funds and their money and their Tao tokens to, not on some arbitrary pumped up price that can be sustained for months. And I think this is much more fairer and healthier with who gets what percentage of the pie when it comes to the work that you're producing as a subnet owner. Ultimately, I think it's going to disperse, you know, the Tao emissions and our, you know, daily resources to people that act in a more fair way and that actually produce value because it's going to get indicated by, you know, the stakers believing or not in a specific subnet. And if you dig a little deeper, you have to understand that everything is intertwined. Tau in, alpha in, alpha price, they're all interconnected. If one changes, everything changes. It's like as if it's getting pulled with a lever. Let me explain. So if you look at the Tau stats documentation, you are going to see that alpha price equals Tau in divided by alpha in. So this means how much Tau is into the subnet's pool divided by how much alpha is into the subnet's pool. So naturally under the new emission model, if a subnet always has net negative staker outflow, meaning people are selling the subnet token much more than they're putting into, the subnet is obviously not going to receive Tau in. So this might put a strain on this division, which is also going to lower the alpha price because if you get a smaller nominator and a bigger denominator, obviously your alpha price is going to be lower. These are basic fractions and you know, just the way subnet liquidity pools work. To sum it up, in my opinion, I highly suggest you start looking for BitTensor tools that are going to indicate the net inflows or outflows of subnets. So, you know, just start tracking sentiment, spend some time on Tao stats and see what subnets are getting sold, what subnets are getting bought. And this is going to give you an indicator as to which subnets are going to get more emissions, therefore more trust and a higher price ultimately. And the second update, which is root claiming versus alpha claiming for root stakers, simply put with this new update starting tomorrow, as a root staker, if you're staked on subnet zero, directly on your hot wallet, you would be able to actually have an extra option to claim the dust of all the subnets that your validator is registered on with which you're staking on subnet zero. So what does that mean? Currently, if you go on Tao app, you're going to see that on subnet zero, which is root, you're probably getting 6% compounded yearly right now for staking Tau to root. But if you understand the framework, you are actually staking on a validator hotkey, which that validator is actually going and registering on a bunch of subnets and earning alpha tokens. And he is selling those alpha tokens just to pay you Tau yield. But now this has been confirmed by the Tau stats team. You will have a button on your hot wallet to be able to select claim alpha instead of claiming only Tau tokens. So let me give you a really simple example. Let's say you're staked on the validator called Rizzo. For simplicity, let's say it's registered on subnet one through 20. Right now, if you don't do anything, that validator is going to sell a piece of those 20 subnets just to pay your annual 6%. But on your hot wallet, you would be able to actually click claim alpha and you would get the equivalent of your 6% obviously divided by 365 days. And so in your wallet, you are going to receive 20 different alpha tokens in small quantities because Rizzo is staked hypothetically to 20 different subnets. So this is the major change. And I'm not too sure, but right now I think it auto claims every two days to root if you don't do anything. But if you select that you want alpha, if you think about it, this is actually going to reduce subnet sell pressure because if you and me and everybody who is taking on root wants all these different alpha tokens that their validator is on and we select it and we press that button, that validator for us at least 
does not need to sell the 20 different subnets just to pay us tau because he doesn't need to convert from alpha to tau. It's going to stay in tau and going to be redirected into your cold key directly. So that was the second change in terms of root staking. And I think it's pretty important because miners have a lot of expenses and they're already a big factor as to selling the tokens every day. And also another group were the validators to pay the root stakers. So, I mean, if a lot of people select claim alpha, this might actually be a positive thing for alpha price for all subnets across the board because there's just going to be less sell pressure to pay out root. So guys, that covers it. Like you see, there's no shortcut to Betensor greatness. It's like going to university. It's like grinding for a PhD or a bachelor. It's the same freaking thing. I'm out here studying 12 hours a day, dedicating my life to it because I want to make a killing in subnets. I really do believe subnets are the new altcoins why the heck would I want to invest in Cardano, XRP, Ethereum or whatever or all these washed up narratives when I can have a company at the tip of my fingers like Ridges who is building the next integrated software engineer directly into my coding terminal? I think just narratives like that are way more fun to explore. I have 128 different subnets to study and it never stops. So it is a grind. Like I said, you can't cheat the game. That's why I'm making this video. I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, if you didn't understand something, drop a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you. With that being said, happy Betensor studying. I hope you guys make a killing and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.